Daddy. Eddie Gordado was, was the heart and soul of our team for a number of years uh, as we transformed the franchise really back into one of the most winning, winningest teams uh, in Major League Baseball. Professional. Um, uh, a guy that uh, believe in sharing knowledge, uh, a guy that believe in uh, helping teammates, a guy that believe in uh, playing the game, uh, leaving everything he has out on the field. Uh, that's what I think about Eddie Guardado when you call his name. At home, he's just a family guy. He's really committed to his family. And it just shows me how someday I want to be committed to my family the way that he is. I would probably describe him as someone that you can always depend on. Um, he's always going to be there. I know that if I ever need anything, whether it's advice, whether if I'm in like some kind of trouble, I know that he'll be there for me. My, one of my favorite teammates of all time, one of my great friends in the game. There's not too many people that's going to say anything bad about Eddie. He was an asshole. I, I know Eddie. Uh, they call him everyday Eddie. I don't know why. I know it's not sexually. He used to always have knives with him. And I always carried a little pocket knife, and he always gave me heck. He said, that's not a knife. And he'd always go to his locker and pull out this machete about this long and say, this is a knife. And I always walked by Eddie, and I always made sure that he didn't stick me with a knife. Edward Adrian Guardado, born in Stockton, California, professional baseball player, family man, humanitarian. Eddie played 17 seasons of Major League Baseball, 11 of them with the Minnesota Twins. He began his career as a starter, but it didn't take. We'd be in meetings and he'd just clonk out, he'd fall asleep, and then he's my locker mate, and I'd keep, I have to keep, keep tapping him, Eddie, Eddie, wake up, wake up, yeah, 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 yeah. It was as a relief pitcher that he earned his nickname, Everyday Eddie, appearing in 83 games in 1996 and averaging 69 appearances in each of his next seven seasons. We call him Everyday Eddie. He could throw every day and he could, he's tough and, and uh, we just thought, you know, instead of using them once every five days, you could use them three out of five days and, and it'll be much more valuable. And Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes they get you. And uh, if you carry that with you and bring it in the next day, you're not going to be successful. He just said, okay, you got me today, I'll get you tomorrow. And I can't remember, as him as my closer, there was very many days ever that Eddie said, I'm too sore to pitch today. Never said that. A friend of mine uh, named Mike, uh, I've been seeing in years, uh, he asked me, hey, Eddie, we know we need uh, an extra player on our team. And I said, sure. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll ask my mom, we try out. So I tried out. The coach that told me if I was going to try, his name is Jerry Swanson. Jerry goes out to take a, the pitcher out, and he looks to the left field and says, Eddie. So I come running in, and I never even told a rubber before, you know, and he goes, you want to pitch? I go, sure. And then next thing you know, it's it was all said and done. And, and to this day, you know, I talk to him and I always thank him. I say, hey, thanks for putting me on that mound, man. In 2002, Eddie had 45 saves, a team record at the time, and led Minnesota to the playoffs for the first time in 11 years. The following year, he had 41 saves, and Minnesota again reached postseason play. Eddie was fearless, you know, and, and, and he was so determined. And, uh, you know, Eddie wasn't the one pitcher with the best stuff I've ever seen but he had the most heart and the most guts of any pitcher I've ever had. It's kind of what you're made of on the inside. You know, I saw Eddie out there pitching with injuries, his knees, his arm, but he never, you know, you couldn't stop him because he still would try to find a way to win a battle that might help your team end up coming out on top. If you're not out there to win the ball game, you don't belong out there. And uh, that's one reason that they like putting Eddie out there. I wanted them, the opposite team, to know that they had a battle. We're going to go to war, and that's what it's all about. You're taking food off the table with my kids. Here we go. He scared the hell out of me when he went to the mound. <laughs> he didn't have anything. You just threw that slop up there, and you got everybody out. You had nothing, Eddie. Don't act like you went to war. You were ducking when you threw the ball. You know, when he did all those things, rolling a rosin bag down, grabbing his Johnson or whatever he was doing, uh, he probably didn't know he was doing it. It just came natural. Few players in the history of our franchise had as special a relationship with fans uh, than Eddie Guardado. You know, the Eddie, Eddie, Eddie chants. It really became uh, a signature of our franchise. Eddie made the American League All-Star team in both 2002 and 2003. He even got a little MVP consideration in 2002, finishing 15th in the balloting. 
Yet despite the sterling numbers he put up, Everyday Eddie is probably best remembered for being one of the greatest pranksters to ever play the game. He was a good joker. He's like Black Bert Blavitt. I mean, he plays tricks, which is good for this game of baseball. I mean, he, he takes it serious, but there's still some jokes in him. I always tell these young guys, you know what? We're, we're, you're playing a dream job. Yeah, we want to do well. We want to make it a career. We want to play 10, 20 years in the big leagues. Yeah, no question. But we're not going to do it if we keep beating our heads in the dirt. That's not how we're going to do it. So we got to enjoy fun. And I pulled a couple pranks here and there, so. <laughs> he wasn't with the Twins when he did this, but he was actually with the Rangers. Came into Chicago the series before we were coming in. He knew we were coming into Chicago right after him. So he, um, he tells Rod McCormick, our, our, our clubhouse guy, that he pissed in all of the uh, shampoo canisters in the shower. So Rod then let me know. So I was the only one on the team that knows, and I'm sitting there, and every single person's taking a shower. Every single person's using the shampoo, washing their soap, and I'm just, I'm dying laughing. In the clubhouse, he was always, you know, harassing people. You know, he, he harassed me, and I had to go see therapy. Eddie likes to pants people. We were, <laughs> we were in a nice restaurant. <laughs> we were standing, and I was on the phone, had on some sweats, <laughs> and he, he got me good. I'm standing there on the phone, trying to hold the phone up, trying to get my pants up in the restaurant. Everybody is looking at me like, what is wrong with this guy? And Eddie, he was on the ground of the restaurant, rolling, gasping, like laughing so hard. They were calling 911 thinking that he was choking and people were trying to come over to help him and he couldn't even compose himself to tell him that he was laughing and not choking. People told me, hey, this guy's does things the right way, plays the game the right way. He's great for young players to be around. I didn't know him, you know, except from a distance and watched him compete, and obviously he was always a big-time competitor. So we signed him that first spring, and for the next two months I'm sitting there looking at this guy. I'm like, this is the guy that does things the right way, and this is the guy we want our, our young players emulating. I hate to say the fact that maybe he developed some of those, in quotes, quirks under my uh, you know, tutelage, so to speak, but yes, he, uh, he started developing his uh, his ability to, uh, how do you want to call it, involve other people with his uh, picadillos of uh, choice. Our bus rides were always extremely interesting because Eddie would be uh, tying guys' shoelaces together when they were sleeping. He would be taking their stuff out of their baseball bag and putting it into the trash bag on the bus. He'd be taking the trash and putting it in their baseball bags. He was in training, and I guess you might say. But that was baseball. And Eddie would be the first to tell you that there's a lot more to life than just playing the game. Just ask his wife Lisa of 16 years, or his 13-year-old son Nico, or his 8-year-old son Jacob, or all the other people he's cared about and helped over the years. Bottom line is he's just a big teddy bear. He's very giving and loving and a great father, husband. He's just an all-around really good guy. He's very laid back, he's a very grounded person. When you see Eddie's kids, you see Eddie. Just great kids. Uh, it's a tribute to him and, and Lisa and uh, just the great family atmosphere that they've had around their house. Being a parent, it's an everyday job. What I did with Nico and Jacob in spring training in Arizona, they used to have an Indian reservation that I used to drive through to go to my house. I drive slow and you see these kids with no shoes in the dirt, you know, and it was really run down and I go, to see these kids, they will die to be driving in the car you're driving, or they'll die just to have some shoes on. You gotta appreciate what you have. I always describe my dad to somebody who asked me about him. He was a pitcher, left-hander, reliever, closer, sorry. He just played hard, and now he's home with us, and we have to like clean up the house every day. Yeah, we call him Mr. Clean. I think of him as an awesome dad. He's uh, wonderful, he's a good guy, and uh, he doesn't do pranks on us. <laughs> he's just like always like really been there for me for everything. He's always make sure that like I was happy and like that's in the end like that's all he wanted me was to be happy. So, you know, growing up, you know, he didn't have a whole lot and whatnot and um, for him it's really important. He just, you know, if we can give back just a little bit just trying to help somebody. Me and another friend of mine, Dave Oliver, he comes to me with this charity event he wants to do for uh, inner city kids where I grew up. Uh, you know, raise money, 
for these kids that can't afford a baseball glove, a pair of spikes, uh, a, even a sponsored team, you know, those type of things. So we've been doing that for the last 10 years and it's been going great. Uh, but you know what? I was one of those kids. I was one of those kids that couldn't afford it. I come from a family of nine. And, uh, you know, to give back to your community, especially where you grew up and the kids that grew up in your area. And if, you know, you put a smile on a kid's face, it's, it's unbelievable. Another foundation we do, it's called Eddie Gordado Foundation. It's do with autism. My daughter is, uh, was diagnosed at two. She's now four, and she is Ava Gordado. And I might get a little soft-spoken here, but uh, when, every time I talk about it. Um, but we, uh, my wife actually came up with an idea to get a foundation going to help autism children. Uh, not to find a cure or research it, but to help families that can't afford the therapy, you know, go get the right doctor, go get the right therapist, uh, uh, things like that. And, and it, it's, it's quite a pretty penny. What we do is help families that can't afford that. And, uh, you know, even if we help one, this is probably now a year or maybe a year and a half, we're just getting on our feet. And uh, if we help one child or one family, that's all great. But we'd like to help many more. So that's what we're focusing on. He's always helping people out, I think, um, not I think, I know. Um, I think he just wants to see like everybody do good and he wants the best for everybody. A lot of his latter years were about mentoring. I mean, he was still out there getting people out, even as that velocity went down, right, Eddie? But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, um, he enjoyed passing on his trade about being a bullpen guy and what it took to be successful day in and day out. I thought it was pretty poignant that he was actually on the mound in 2002 when we won um, our first playoff series in a long, long time in Oakland. Um, in some ways, I think it was very appropriate that Eddie Guardado was the guy delivering that save and ultimately advancing the Twins to the postseason. If it wasn't for Eddie, I wouldn't have stayed in this business for sure. I'd just like to say thanks for teaching me never to give up. Thank you for taking us to clubhouses because I know a lot of the players' kids didn't get to go to the clubhouse. Just thank you for teaching me some important lessons in life and we're grateful for you and um, always keep your head up and like he always says, like fly on Dookie. I got it. Uh, I have a chance to know Eddie when he was in the minor league. But when he comes to the big league, still he was the same. He, he bring it, the right attitude every day to the ballpark. He's smiling, happy, and ready to go every single day. I'm really proud of you. Uh, made the, the most of your ability um, from a, a little Mexican kid from Stockton, California, and I tip my hat to you. I would just like to thank him for everything he's taught me, all the life lessons that and experiences that I've had living with him the past three years. He's always there for me, and um, I'm really grateful for that. Well, for all of my years of professional baseball, uh, the one thing that I've taken away from uh, baseball uh, is that even now I'm still showering with uh, one eye open because of Eddie Guardado. <laughs> You're having your party on the same day my son's having his 16th birthday party, November 13th. And uh, so I had to pick and choose Eddie or my kid. I was like, Eddie, leave my kid out. He can go do what he want to do. I'm going to see Eddie, but my wife pulled me by the ear and told me I had to come and be with my kid for his 16th birthday party. It's boring. I like to be with Eddie. Eddie! I can smell you, Eddie! <laughs> All right, I'm gone. Deuces. Eddie, happy birthday. Eddie, I just say I'm just proud of, as, as I'm sure you are, just your, the career you had. But I think more, more importantly, I think, um, as you're removed from the game um, and you reflect back on teammates, a lot of our performances aren't necessarily things that kind of come to mind. It's, it's more of, of those people that touched you personally, and I think you were certainly the type of player that uh, many that play with you would recall you know, the teammate that they were proud to say they played with. Congratulations on your, your career. You had a great career, and it, it was my pleasure knowing you and being a part of your family. I enjoyed playing with you. Enjoy you as a person, and I love your competitiveness. Eddie, I just want to say you're an awesome teammate. Um, I appreciate looking out for me when I was young and, and coming up through the, through the big leagues. Um, congratulations on your whole career, and I wish you success in your second career, whatever, whatever it may be. You meant a lot to me 
for the two years that we played together. Uh, you taught me a lot about preparation. You taught a lot of me about how to have fun at the, at the, at the field. Um, you know, I, I just really appreciate my time with you. Thank you. I know you like to get on me about being the old goat. And, uh, you know, I'm not wearing the Depends yet, but one of these days I'm sure you'll send me a case of those. What's up, Big Eddie G? First of all, I'd like, I like to congratulate you on uh, a great career. It was fun going out competing with you in Minnesota and got a chance to compete against you a little bit when I was with Cleveland. Best of luck in time 40. Take your time, go fishing, enjoy the family, and also have a great night. Put your clothes back on, you sick son of a gun. I'm just really proud of him as a person and as a, as a father and as a husband. I mean, he's just, um, he's really done a tremendous job of taking the values of what I consider to be important values and really putting them to, to work and, and living them, not just talking about them. Eddie, if you retire, I'm going to come up there and kick your ass in, in Stockton, California. He's a really great guy. I like he's, that. A, he's got a big heart. He's got room for his heart for everybody. That. He's a big teddy bear. <laughs> Bye, Daddy.